So it's raining weddings every Saturday and you'd want to make beautiful George blouses and wrapper for brides and their moms and their aunties. So you need to learn how to make an Igbo blouse, a modern blouse, a traditional blouse with a George fabric. Okay, so there are different types of Georges and they come in really beautiful patterns and prints. So, but this is a low budget um, George fabric. And you can see that the patterns and the prints on the George fabric are not so much. So you're going to find out a way to, you know, maneuver this fabric that is low budget and not so fine. Not like it's not so fine, but not so different or so many designs to still come out well. Okay, so the first step is to get a matching interfacing. So you need to put your interfacing inside um the George fabric to find out if it matches okay so you need to make sure that it matches up now i have that i folded mine into two and i've marked the length i want for my George and the width of your fabric it's your bust measurement divided by four plus at least six inches so i'll be marking the vertical lines here i've marked the bust point which is 11 i added half inch that's 11 and half the under bust which is uh, 14 and half i've added half in that's 15 the half length which is 17 and i maintained that so what i'll do is going to go ahead and you know rule out these lines you're welcome to my channel and you're welcome back you my existing and returning subscribers are welcome back and if you're new here you're welcome to the channel this is lent so with nani and here we drop and upload fashion tutorials every week now the next thing i did was to mark the length of the blouse which is 27 inches she wants it to be really long and i added one and a half inches Hem in allowance now from the bust point i went upwards by two inches and that would serve as my chest line okay so you don't need to do too many calculations here whatever you have as your bust point just go step up by two inches right so i'm just going to start taking in the body measurements the boss is 36.5 i'm going to divide that by four whatever value i have i'm going to mark that on the bust point right now the waistline the waist measurement is 30 and a half i'm going to divide it by four whatever value i get i'm going to mark that on the under bust line and on the waistline and the under bust uh second waist is actually 30 and a half the same as the waist okay for this person she has the same measurement for her under bust uh, circumference and her waist circumference now the hip measurement is 41 i'll divide it by four whatever value i get i'm going to mark that on the length of the blouse and i'll connect like so now the next thing i'll do is to add my two inches side seam allowance okay so you can add whatever seam allowance you use 1.5 one inch is okay but you know nigerians now especially all these bright mothers they want excess allowance in case they add reduce add again all of those things so i've just added my two inches seam allowance and i took it up to the chest line like so now we need to start imputing the darts and this is what is going to cop out the bust area now on the bust point i'm marking the bust point which is the nipple to nipple measurement has its eight inches i divide that by two and a half four inches then i add one inch half inch in my allowance that's 4.5 so i've marked 4.5 on the bust point under bust half length but on the blouse length i added one inch to that so i have 5.5 then at the upper part i still maintain the 4.5 all right so the essence of adding one inch at the up lower part is just to flare it out a little bit so it's not tight on the waist okay just going to give you that six pieces uh, blouse look you know but not so much do you get just so that the waist area is not constricted and it's tight all of, around that part so that's why i just flared it out now towards the center front i'm going to take a dart of one inch on the bust the under bust sorry and on the half length now towards the side front i'm taking a dart of two inches now she wants the curve to be very pronounced so i'm doing two inches now i have a size chart that i use for this my under bust contouring okay so i'll share that with you in the description box so i'm going to connect in a curve from the bust point to the under bust you can also use your curve ruler to make that connection okay so just connect from the bust point to the under bust the same for the center front area now on the upper part towards the center front i'm going to take a that of one inch and i'm going to connect that to the bust point 
like so you can see that then towards the side front i'm going to take a dart of 1.5 inches now you can as well take the same dart you did on the underboss but it's going to be too sharp so you're going to reduce whatever dart you took on the underboss reduce it by a half inch then mark out so that's why i've marked 1.5 inches and i've connected that to the boss point as well so we have cupped out the dart now the next thing is to extend this dart to the blouse length so i stepped up by three inches you can as well do two inches then you know curve it out like so or flare it out like so yeah so you can step up by two inches or three inches from the um, blouse length or the hip area to you know flare it out so it's time to replace all the darts i've taken so on the under boss i took a dart of three inches the same for the waist so i've replaced that that now at this other side i took a dart of two so whatever that you take just make sure that you replace it that's the essence now at the upper part i'll also go ahead and measure whatever dart that i have there i think i have around 1.5 so i'll go and replace it and connect it back to the waistline now by the time i cut out this dart i'm going to need half inch on the both sides of this pattern or this fabric okay to sew it to, to sew it together i need half inch on the center front and half inch on the side front to couple the darts together and that's one inch so i'm adding down one inch as my dart seam allowance you can see that so this is how you're going to replace your dart and still add seam allowance to it alongside the seam allowance you've already already added now what i've done is just extend that line to the upper part and i'll go ahead and cut it out all right so if you found any difficulty just step back and replay the video i'm also in the comment section to listen to all uh, your questions okay and you can also chat me up on whatsapp and i would you know answer to all of your questions now what i did here is to step up from my same allowance i just curved out to the center front or to my that line that way i have a curvy hem i don't have it just straight okay i just planted the hem of my blouse so i'm just going to go ahead and cut out my dart now while you're cutting the dart you need to make sure that you curve your hands okay so that's what forms the bust here okay or the boost here whatever you call it that's what forms the bust here or the boost here, depending on your tongue or your pronunciation right so it's not about how much um what didn't you use it's not about how much breast pad you use it's not about how much interfacing you use a lot of people stuff the uh, bust area with so much padding and all of those things so it's not about how much of those things you use it's about your cutting if you cut it right you can actually wear it without so much padding right so i for my off shoulder i did a minus four so that's what i did i, for, I forgot to say that um earlier I, for me to take my uh, vertical measurements i placed four inches from the top of my fabric okay because it's an off shoulder right so that's how i got it so if you are confused at that point that's what i did i placed my tape at four inches starting from the upper part then i took all the body measurements okay so i've done the same thing here i've taken the bust points the half length the blouse length and my same allowance and i also stepped up from the bust point by two inches to get my chest line now what i'm doing is to mark out the zip allowance of two inches okay so i've marked out two inches for my zip allowance mind you we're cutting the back right now so on the bust point i'm going to mark the bust measurement divided by four the same as i marked them plus two inches i'm all that on the chest line and on the bust point now on the half length i'm going to mark the waist which is 30 and half divided by four whatever i have there i'm going to add two inches same allowance to it you get now on the length of the blouse i'm going to mark the hip measurement which is 41 divided by four whatever value i get i mark that and add two inches same allowance to it right so and i'm going to connect it like so and now it's time to that and i'm going to mark the boss pan divided by two plus half inch okay so the boss pan is eight divided by two that's four plus half inch similar that's 4.5 so i marked 4.5 on the boss point and on the half length then on the length of the blouse i marked 5.5 okay i added one into it just to fly it out i also marked the same 4.5 at the upper part now i'm taking a dart of half inch on both sides of the half length like so just like we take our normal waist dart and also blend it to the length of the blouse so what i'm going to do is to measure the dart i have taken and i'm going to replace it remember whatever that you take make sure you replace so this is what i've done 
now i've replaced my dart i'm going to cut out this dart so i'm going to need half inch on both sides to join it so that's one inch i'm marking that one inch just so that i don't have a shortage by the time i'm done joining okay so your dart replacement and your dart seam allowance very very important now i've marked that the next thing i want to do is to contour the back of my blouse okay the zipper area so that i don't have puffiness or bulge at the back so from the half length i stepped in by three quarter of an inch then from there i steam back to my two inches zip allowance okay i maintained it all through so that's what i have done i have slanted the zipper area that way i'm not going to have a bulge and you know the back is the spine is not straight so that's what i've just done to contour it a little bit so that it's not straight now at that three quarter i've added it back to the waistline then i connected like so so whatever you are removing please make sure that you replace it that way you don't have a shortage by the time you're done joining your fabric and you're going to run into troubles you get so that's what we are doing now now the same thing i did to the um lower to the front i'm just going to slant the bottom of my blouse like so so i don't have a straight or a sharp edge so then i'm going to go ahead and cut out now you want to if you want to have your back plain without cutting out the darts please you are free to do that just go ahead and you know sew your darts but when you cut out the darts it gives your work a very neat and beautiful finishing and it adds to the design that your blouse or your work has so now whenever i've cut out the darts i'm going to go ahead and notch out those places so that you don't miss them or misplace them when you're joining now the upper part i'm going to make sure i notch on the two sides center front center back and side back that way it's going to demonstrate to me that this part is the upper part because by the time you are done cutting you're going to you're not going to know which part is which so it's better you notch to identify the patterns for you all right also make sure that you notch out your zip allowance okay and cut out the zipper area so whatever i've just cu I've cut out i'll go and cut exactly the same thing i'm going to make a replica of this and cut it on my lining fabric right now it's time to place your uh, underlay on top of the george fabric and this is where your creativity comes in so you can see i'm trying to place it in a way that i'm going to get all the patterns and all those beautiful prints on my george to show now if I, if I place it like this the wrapper is going to cover that beautiful design so i have turned it upside down that way i'm going to have this beautiful design what is beautiful this beautiful design are the upper parts and the lower parts there will be no design around that place because the wrapper is going to cover it so i've also placed it underneath so that i can look at it to be sure of the direction of the prints so this is one thing you need to make sure you do right so i've cut out the center front now i'm cutting out the side front so still place it the same same way okay watch the direction of the prints and cut out so that's what i have just done so you need to make sure that the, the part that has design is not going to a place that your wrapper will cover or that will not be showing you need to place the prints at strategic positions to give you a very beautiful look at the end of the day right so i've cut out the center front and the side front now for the back there's not the back does not really have so much problem there's not so much design at the back okay and the george fabric is really plain here so i've cut out the places that have plenty design i've cut i've used that to cut the front and the back really does not have issues okay so even if i have a spare fabric or i have some remaining fabric and it has patterns and prints to it i cannot use my um what's it called my i can't remember the name right now okay um what's it called i can't remember this thing that they used to use on fixed phones i remember and i'll post it i'll, I'll keep it on the uh in the description box okay so i'm going to, sorry my soldering iron yes soldering iron so i'll use my soldering iron to cut out the designs and either hand tack it or use a glue gun to you know do that so i've cut out the, i'm cutting out the pieces for the back okay just place them on your judge fabric and cut out this part is really easy we've already done that on the satin so just place on your jordan and cut the most important part is the front part where you have all the strategic prints but if you still have those beautiful prints uh, left you can actually add them to the back or incorporate them at the back now so what i've done is to stitch the judge fabric onto the interfacing okay you can see onto the yeah not the interfacing the under underlay okay the, the fabric underlay that's my brother's satin or your mirror face or dolphin whichever one, whichever one you are using so i had to use my sewing machine to run stitches on them just so that they will become one piece i've also added my breast pad 
so you can see the ash colored stuff underneath the fabric is my breast pad okay so i have tutorials on how to cut a bustier so you'd see how to uh, cut out your breast pad from that tutorial now i'm going to make sure that i trim off the edges and you have exactly what i have on the satin as as well as on the george okay so trim out any excesses that you may have okay even on the breast pad area okay trim out every essay this is very important so that by the time you are joining you're not going to have issues or you know join on lesser similar ones or more similar ones so i've placed the center front and the side front right side facing right side i'm going to start joining from the bottom please i am um, you can use any type of breast pad you want you can use wadding foam breast pad anyone okay so this person wants has to be very strong and cup like so i'm using this foam breast pad so you can as well make use of wording depending on your preference or how you like your bust area or your bust here to be so remember i added half inch similar ones okay so i'm using half inch similar ones to couple the dust together so you're going to make sure that you are working on half inch similar ones okay because any mistake can ruin your um bust area so you need to make sure that you stick to that half inch seam allowance right so i'm done joining one side you can see so i'm going to get the other side front we're having a copy look already so i'm going to get the other side front and i'm going to place it on the center front right side facing right side and i'm going to start sewing from the lower part okay so that's what we do i like to sew from the lower part and you also need to notch out your underboss and make sure that the underboss on the center front matches the underboss on the side front that way you're going to have a very sweet and lovely bust area so it's not when the underboss on the center front is uh, maybe two inches lower than the underboss oh you go you're, going, you're just going to have uh, a catastrophic uh, bust here <laughs> what, what, what kind of what was that, what was that supposed to be anyways moving forward you're going to stick to your half inch some allowance and so all round so at this bust area you're basically just following the shape that you have already made that's why i said that the, the beauty of your bustier is in the cotton so it is the shape you you cut out they're going to sew on right so it's not by padding or placing heaps of breast pad and wadding and interfacing and all of those things it's from your cotton so that thing that i've already cut that you gone so you can also what it not cut do you get right so you can see i'm done and this is beautiful so what i'll do is to go ahead and notch from the under but just notch it all around where i have the foam breast pad you know just so that it's going to loosen the tension around that area you know tension just reduce the tension around the area what well, yes the tension around that area so just go ahead and give it very beautiful notches and make sure that you don't cut through your seam if not you start again and it's going to ruin your bust here so you can see i have not ironed nothing and the cup area is looking this beautiful you can see that so now we can now start working on the neckline and on the armhole i'm sure you'll be wondering why this woman has not added neckline there is no armhole is this going to be straight like this my sister not like that though i just like to do these things after joining that way you have more accurate measurements so i folded it together into two so at the top area i'm going to mark my neck width which is six and a half to determine your neck width i'm going to take away 1.5 inches from half of your shoulder now remember that this is my minus four so i'm going to place it at minus four then mark out nine inches which is the length of my armhole then i'm going to mark two inches from the center front then do a sweetheart neckline okay remember my off shoulder is minus four and my chest line is nine inches so that's what i did i placed my tape at minus four starting from the upper part then stopped at nine inches and made the mark there so from my 6.5 i slanted it down to the armhole now if you're wondering how i got my neck width you are you know, my shoulder measurement is 16 divided by two that's eight so that eight is half of my shoulder measurement so I minus 1.5 from me that is 6.5 so that is how i got the neck width and that is how you get your neck width even if your shoulder is 55 divided by two whatever you get minus 1.5 from it now what i'm doing is to stitch or top stitch on this upper part just to hold the satin and the george fabric together so that they are not turning on you you know one is not moving you know so what i've also done here is to reduce the foam breast pad so it's not getting into my neckline so that way it's not going to give me a bulky neckline 
so like i said i'm just going to go ahead and hold them together using my stitches even the armhole i'll just go and hold it together so that you're not having a ban on my hair one is going left and the other one's going right you know those things don't make sense now so the back i'm also going to join it as well now at this back if you don't have if you're not careful you're going to have eye problem and your head will be spinning that is where your notch is coming so i'm going to look for the notch and follow the direction of the notches that i have made to couple it together if not you're going to have my green discovering or trying to find out whether this one is the upper part is it the lower part is it the side so that's why i said make sure that you know so you can see me trying to find out and i have found out thankful is it thankful i'm thankful to my notches yes so i'm going to join using half inch my lemons <laughs> 20 minutes into this video and you are still watching thank you your data will not finish your phone will not your battery will not die your phone will not rust thank you for watching till now i love you god bless you and if you have not subscribed please now subscribe okay i'm be in fact i'm begging you i'm on my knees i'm begging you please subscribe you could like this video because oh like it so that you know youtube will recommend it to other people so they'll also follow you and be seeing this my beautiful work mm -hmm. so the same thing you did to the other piece reach this the other side you know do whatever you've done to the brother do to the sister now i have attached my zipper i've even fixed the line and on all those things so i'm going to show you how to do this on the front that way we don't waste too much time like i've said your, your data will not finish so if you'll be watching all these long long videos your data will finish so that's why i've reduced it so that your data will not finish what am i saying now this is the front so from this i'm going to show you how you will join the back i've already joined the back hole but from this showing the front you also get the is it intuition to join the back yeah intuition i am school i went to school so the line this is the line i'm using a bad lining I've, I've told you that this is a low budget um judge sewing okay so the person you know so we're using a bad lining for this project so i have joined the lining the same way i joined the upper the main fabric okay i'm going to pin this area now what we are going to do is to reduce the length of the lining from the length of the fabric from not from the upper part from the down part because not from the neckline area from the down part so i'm reducing it by one inch you can see this is the upper part i did not touch that place it is from the lower part you know the hem of the blouse that is where i reduced the one inch from okay so what i'm going to do is to match up the midpoint remember all those things that i did to my neckline you know i did it to the lining this is those things i did to the neckline on the blouse on the main fabric i did the same thing to the lining anything many again many me feel men adam anything you do to the the fabric due to the lining you, you get so now but this trimming on the fabric we're going to be looking at faces you only trim the neckline you not trim the main fabric because of what i other that was what i got now what i have here this white thing i see here is hemming gum I'm attaching it to the neckline as well. That way, when I'm done sewing and I iron, the neckline is going to wrap around. It's going to be very, it's going to marry each other, the fabric and the lining. Mm -hmm. So I'm done joining the neckline. I notched it, so it's time to top stitch. Okay, so I'm top stitching on the lining. I'm going to make sure that the SS allowance or the seam allowance is moving towards the lining. Okay, push all of them towards the lining. Then you top stitch. I'll turn this upside down. Is it sorry inside out? To show you what i mean <laughs> my english is not my mother tongue like my native language uh -huh. so you can see i notched the neckline okay then pushed all the same allowance towards the line and then before i top stitched using like one yes one quarter same allowance or one eighth of an inch mm -hmm. so after turning the neckline i'm going to turn the hemline you turn the neckline first then you turn the hemline so remember right side facing right sides you start hemming with half inch okay so i'm hemming the bottom part with half inch you can see that and if your thread cuts like my own is cut we could fix it back it's not me that did the sewing machine all right so we're going to keep sewing <laughs> ah okay oh. so we keep sewing with our half inch seam allowance all around and you're going to make sure that you have a very smooth shape at the lower part okay don't have it don't make it uh, sharp no me to have some swaggering give it some swaggering you get so i'm going to keep on sewing like so i don't know why i'm not fast forwarding this area but i want you to see exactly what i'm doing remember 
is the lining I'm using to turn the lower part. I've used the lining to turn the neckline. I'm using the same lining to turn the hemline. That's where you're going to have a very clean finishing. Do you get you're not going to start weaving all of those things? You have a very clean finishing. And when somebody sees your work, they will know that you know what you are doing. Okay, it's not that after sewing, you're going to be seeing thread lines moving here and there. We don't want it in this year. So I'm going to cut out the excess just to leave the same allowance at least at a quarter of an inch. Then after that, we are going to, after shaving out, we are going to start off stitching. Now, I like to stop stitch the hem, okay, because it helps me to avoid the lining sticking out or poking out from underneath the fabric. Reducing the length of your lining helps you to achieve that, but as well, but by the time you top stitch, it's going to help you maximize that effect, okay? Hmm. Alright, so we're going to start top stitching, and when you're top stitching, make sure that you push the same allowance okay the remaining one remember we trimmed it off so the remaining one push it towards the lining then you top stitch on the lining that way you're holding the lining down so it's not going to be poking out from the fabric or from underneath the fabric now when you're done you're not going to uh, sew the sides okay so you can see everything is facing right side facing each other you can see that <clears throat> Excuse me, so you're going to start sewing the sides using half inch seam allowance. Okay, you're just going to use the lining to turn the sides. Now, everything that we have done here, we're going to do the same thing to the back. Okay, and I had already done the same thing to the back. That's why I decided to use the front to illustrate. That way, we don't spend so much time on this tutorial. So, you're going to notch the bottom, you can see, so that when you turn it out, everything is going to look really nice. Now make sure that you or you iron your bust hair very well or inside out. It's going to give you use your bust ironer or your tailor's ham to give your bust hair a very good press. Okay, it's not it's not iron, I say press. You're going to press it till everything lays really nice. So you can see now my lining is not sticking out from underneath the fabric, and when I turn on the inside. You're going to see the lining is shorter than the main fabric. That way, there is no way that this lining is going to be poking out from underneath the fabric and make your work look tacky. No way at all. Okay, so you can see the lining is clean, the inside is clean, the outside is clean. So, this is what you get when you use the lining to turn the fabric. Okay, so, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do next is to get the front and the back sorry we're going to start shipping now before i do that i like to you know redraft my or recut uh, the neckline okay so you're going to check your neckline with because most times you always have issues with that so make sure you do that so i'm going to take the body measurements okay so what i did was to measure the board divided by two and mark it the weight divided by two mark the head divided by two mark so i'm going to go ahead and stitch on those points okay so just take your body measurements whatever i have as your bust divided by two and mark it on the bust area or on the chest line on the half length your waist divided by two not by four now okay on the hip line the hip divided by two okay just mark them out like that you know how you shape your garments now so i've just done the shaping then i'm stitching it together you can see now we are almost done with this blouse the next thing is just to go ahead and attach um, your off shoulder sleeve and i also have a tutorial on that that i'll be linking in the description box now like i said by the time you are done joining okay so you need to redraft your armhole and possibly your neckline because after joining your neckline is going to increase your armhole is going to reduce you get the neckline will increase and the armhole will reduce so i've trimmed the excess from my neckline now i want to show you how to do that for the armhole so match up the armhole you can see that my armhole is really small now so i did an off shoulder of minus four after turning with my line it is now minus 4.5 so i've placed my tape at 4.5 then marked the length of my armhole which is nine inches you can see so i'm going to now reshape the armhole so this is where a lot of people get it wrong by the time they are done the armhole will reduce and they will not uh, reshape the armhole they'll go and join their sleeve like that and the person is going to have difficulties raising her hand and moving in so in the dress and people will be complaining that's how i'll show that do now you know it's off shoulder it's going to be difficult to raise up your hands no it's not difficult to raise your hands it is you that you not retrace or retrim your armhole 
so you can see i now have a big armhole that's going to accommodate this person's arm you can see so people just say hey it's true that it doesn't really accommodate your hand it is not true you refused or you forgot or you did not know that you would trim your armhole so this is what it looks like i'm just going to go ahead and attach these sleeves i have an off shoulder tutorial on my channel on how to make off shoulder sleeves so i'll drop the link in the description box and the lower part is going to be a bell sleeve so we have a beautiful off shoulder Ibo blouse or madame blouse or traditional blouse these are the pictures i suck at taking pictures but this is the outcome of what we've done i hope you love it so till i see you next time bye